We are continuing with Ra Vimashankaram 7.3. The main theme here is the interplay between angles and lengths. Inner product is the linear algebraic tool unifying the two. We are using this tool to generalize these concepts to dimensions higher than 3. So far, however, the only angle we have been able to generalize using inner products is 90 degrees or orthogonality as it is called. The natural next question is whether we can generalize other angles as well. For example, if we are given two vectors in say R10 or even C100, two vectors like this, can we say in some reasonable way that the angle between them is say something like 60 degree? The surprising answer is yes. To see this, we take a look at the geometric interpretation of dot products in R2 or R3. Suppose we have these two vectors u and v in R2 or R3 and the angle between them is theta. In that case, we know u dot v can be interpreted as length of u times length of v times cos theta. This is something that we often use during our higher secondary physics. Now, this allows us to define the angle theta, to obtain the angle theta in terms of the inner products and norms in the following way. Theta equal to cos inverse of the dot product divided by product of the norms. Now, of course, since I am dividing by the product of the norms, they must both be non-zero, which is natural because if one of these, at least one of these vectors is a null vector, norm zero means null vector, then it has got no direction. So, it cannot help in forming an angle. So, we naturally assume that both u and v are non-zero vectors. Now, our plan is to use this relationship to generalize the concept of angles or to define angles for even other inner product spaces, not just R2 and R3. We know how to generalize dot product to inner product. So, we want to do this. And once we have inner products, we can define norm in terms of that inner product. So, this is the dream that we have to define angles in other inner product spaces. There is, however, one difficulty. In, for, in order for us to take cos inverse, we must need this quantity to lie between minus 1 or plus 1. Or equivalently, we want this u v less than or equal to u times the norms v. We do not know whether for any inner product space this is going to be true. In fact, this is actually true and that is called the cauchy schwartz inequality. A very important result that we are now going to prove. Um, uh, many proofs are known for this theorem. We shall provide one well motivated short proof. To motivate the proof, we ask ourselves why cos theta always lie between minus 1 and 1? The answer has to do with right angle triangles. Cos theta is defined as this side divided by the hypotenuse. Since hypotenuse is the longest side, this follows that you are dividing a smaller number by a larger number. As a result, the laser must be less than or equal to 1 in absolute value. Now, this fact that the hypotenuse must be greater than or equal to this, that actually follows from Pythagoras theorem because square of the hypotenuse is this square plus square length of this, whatever that is, that is a non-negative quantity. Since we know how to generalize Pythagoras theorem to higher dimensions or to any inner product space, there 
is every hope that this result that cos theta absolute value of that is less than or equal to 1 can be generalized in the same way. We already worked with two non-zero vectors u and v and we want to define the angle between them. What we do is that we first try to find the foot of this perpendicular. Now this is the tip of this vector and this vector lies along v so this vector must be of the form lambda v for some, some scalar lambda. Now we also need this thing to be orthogonal to this. Now what is this? This is the vector u minus lambda v. From u you subtract lambda v you get this vector. We want this to be orthogonal to v which means we want u minus lambda v and inner product of that with v should be 0. Now, since we already have distributivity property in the first argument, we can immediately rewrite this as or if we express lambda in terms of u's and v's, we get lambda is equal to the inner product divided by the norm square of v. Okay, so now we are in a position to use our familiar idea that hypotenuse square must be greater than or equal to squared norm of this and that is what will guarantee that cos theta even in this high dimension or any arbitrary inner product state is also less than or equal to 1 in absolute value. So, I am right time to write that this square is greater than or equal to that square and why is that? Because norm square of this is norm square of this plus norm square of this that is Pythagoras which we know is valid in any inner product space. So, we can write norm of u square is greater than or equal to norm of lambda v whole square. Now, I know the property of norm this lambda will come out. Now, taking a non-negative square root of both sides and now we use the fact that lambda is actually given by this quantity. So, I have this. Just remember that when I am writing these two vertical lines, I mean that that's the absolute value in case of real field and the complex modulus in case of complex field. So, I have one cancellation here. Take this on this side and immediately you get the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. We had earlier mentioned the triangle inequality which holds for arbitrary inner product spaces and it said that if V is any inner product space, you take any two vectors in V, in that case the norm of X plus Y must be less than or equal to norm of X plus norm of Y. Indeed, this was property 3 which we used to define norms in general. We had mentioned that the inner the norm induced by an inner product will satisfy this but we had not proved it. Now, we are in a position to prove it because it requires cauchy schwartz inequality. Now, why is it called triangle inequality? We have already seen that if we take x as this vector follow it up with another vector y in that case from this end to that end this vector is x plus y and in this case this inequality simply says that one side of this triangle, the length of one side is less than or equal to the sum of the length of the other two sides, which is a standard fact for our R2 or R3 triangles. So, triangle inequality says the same intuition works for any inner product space. The proof is pretty straightforward. We first start with square of the left hand side and express that in terms of inner product. We know inner product distributes, so we shall employ that to get. This is very much like the a plus b whole square formula except that we do not know whether things commute because the field may be c. As a result, I have kept x y and y x separate. However, we know that they must be actually complex conjugates of each other. So, their sum must be twice the real part. We have just used the fact that this is square norm of x that is square norm of y and you have combined this to get this thing. Okay, now we are going to apply triangle inequality for 
real number. These are all real numbers. We are proving triangle inequality for arbitrary inner product spaces. We shall employ triangle inequality for real numbers. So, this is sum of three things. So, this must be less than or equal to absolute value of this plus absolute value of this plus absolute value of this. So, I will put less than or equal to absolute value of this is itself, absolute value of this is itself because these are non-negative. But here we need to put this. Okay, so now I have this thing which is possibly a complex number and absolute value of its real part. Now there is a nice result which relates the absolute value of the real part of a complex number with its modulus. Suppose Z is some complex number and this is the origin. In that case this part is the real part of Z. I am working with only the length so I will take the absolute value and this is the modulus of z. Again, the Pythagoras idea holds, you can see that this is greater than equal to that, which means for any complex number, the absolute value of its real part must be less than or equal to its modulus. We are going to employ that here. So, we shall simply remove the re from here. So, earlier it was absolute value, now it has become modulus. Now, once I have this, I, I can use Cauchy-Schwarz inequality because I know that this is less than or equal to product of the two lengths. So, this is less than or equal to everything else remains as it is, but this fellow becomes twice length of x times length of y. And this is our familiar a square plus 2ab plus b square form. So, this is norm of x plus norm of y whole square. You just take non-negative square root and you immediately get the triangle inequality that we were trying to prove.